two on the same row, but I do the first and then the exam. Okay. Okay.
you'll, you'll get the warmest reception of the whole tour in Liverpool. Um, <laughs> because it's a, it's a very radical city, uh, going back a long way. Um, you're so eloquent the way you put it. We, we've actually had other researchers on the tour saying similar things, but no one has put it as eloquently as you. That was excellent. You should, you should be up here. And, and actually on the first night, we were um, speaking and, and Emma uh, had, has terminal cancer. And she was talking about her experience um, and having friends who have to crowdsource online for the drugs that they take. Incredible. Um, and she was saying, actually, her voice now, you know, it's, it's kind of lost in that there's so many, as she said, sob stories out there. It's kind of lost. And what she wanted was researchers, doctors and nurses to make their voices heard more. And I'm wondering if we can incorporate some of your experiences at some point into the campaign, even just as a quote or something like that. But maybe we can... We can talk about it later because I thought it was so um, it was so eloquent the way you uh, the way you put that. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yes, it's true what you're saying. The the, the drugs with uh, lots of side effects, like the one that the drug that I've talked about, Stavudin, was given to us because we didn't have we we were just given drugs that other countries were no longer using. So that is why treatment action campaign, we are working closely with researchers. We have a research team in our in our in our organization where they always research. That is why we work with doctors and MSF so that they'll be able to update us to say this is what is happening now. Like for instance, as I've said, we fought for, for, for our government to phase out the staff team. Staff team was cheaper for them and they, did, they were resisting to, 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 to change us to, to turn up for them. But we had to fight back and say, we know there's this drug in this country, this is how much it costs. So we, we forced them to go and buy uh, from other countries. And we forced the government that today in South Africa we are able to, to make generics because of the fight that we did. But we still continue to do that. Like for instance, we, we found out earlier this year that uh, through the research that is happening at, at VETS, one of the doctors who is a researcher and um, a professor in, 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 in VETS, he always updates us on the new drugs. There's a drug called Dolutacrave. That drug, it has fewer, fewer side effects and we as treatment campaign action campaign we took upon our our shoulders to educate communities about that drug we know that now because as i've said i'm taking the uh, um, tenor for vet tenor for vet it, it metabolizes on my on the, on the kidney at some point after some few years i will develop i will develop a kidney pain mm -hmm. so if i i change to the to to, to the metabolite, which it has fewer side effects then I still have more years to come to, to, to live and chances to live. So we, we we engaged the government to say there's this new drug. It's uh, still under research, but it's in other countries like Botswana and other African countries. They are using this drug, and we want this drug. So because they know that if they resist, we'll take them to court. They just agreed to say no from next year, first uh, April, that drug will start to be uh, available in the public sector. So what I'm saying is we still see the, those challenges where the government wants to buy the cheaper drugs, but we do our research and continue to force them to give us new drugs. Well done. Really champion for everybody yeah. sitting there, Liz. Thank you again. Now we're ready to take some more uh, questions. Hands up then. Could we have uh, one from David and then John? And we'll take three this time. Anybody else on this side would they want to ask a question? And, and uh, there is a chap in the back. So. I've been asked to ask a question by Sam Seller, those who are from Liverpool. Uh, well, no, Sam was a tremendous fighter for public ownership of the health service and, and preventing uh, some of the more egregious uh, activities going on. He asked me to put the point that he thinks that a great deal of money from the National Health Service is not just going to pay for these massively inflated drug prices, but also for the equipment and the um, uh, you know, delivery systems for drugs are 
constantly being upgraded or increased, increased in cost and so on, and, and pressure ones come on, and it's a way of, of, of uh, uh, taking money out of the National Health Service by these large corporations. He wanted me to ask that question, and on my own uh, behalf, I asked the question, surely, given the evidence, uh, which can be put in the public domain for the ac activities of these drug industries, surely it would be very popular for a Labour government in the future to bring the whole drug production system into public ownership and get the private profit out of it. CETA, we're kind of using different mechanisms um, together. And, and I suppose because we're in a weird situation now with, with, with Brexit hanging over us, um, that we haven't taken the initiative on that. But, but a lot of the rest of the Europeans are now fighting against the idea, which the European Commission wants to do, of changing these corporate courts into a proper international, proper legal standing court. Uh, if you like. So um, it's called the Multilateral Investment Court. I can talk to you about it at the end if you want. It's, it's a bit complicated, but it, 
essentially it, it does improve the corporate courts in a way, but in another way it puts them on a really proper legal platform of standards. So we don't want that either. So that, so their work at the moment is to lobby against that. Our, our question is just how big a role we should play in that, given we don't know where we'll be in the European Union or not. But I can give you some links to that, to that campaign. Um, I, I, I'm really happy that people have brought up, because I should have said it, socialised uh, research and development, nationalised research and development. And that's absolutely one of the things we're calling for. Um, it could be done at a national level, you could set up a national research and development, and you could also do it at an international level, through the World Health Organization or something like that. I think it's absolutely vital. There's nothing to say that you still can't have private companies doing what they do or whatever. You know, if they can do it better, then they can do it better. But I mean, I think it's absolutely essential that we have public control over some of this, especially given we're putting so much money into it already. And, I, and I've got a figure down here. It's absolutely extraordinary that I didn't have time to uh, get to. Um, but something like, let me find my figure, the, the, the rise, just the rise in the amount of money that the NHS spends on drugs from pharmaceutical companies has gone up so much in the last five years that just the increase is twice the amount of the NHS deficit. Just the increase in the amount that the NHS spends on. So it's getting worse. Now, I think given where we are at the moment, there is a very good chance that we can persuade the Labour Party to adopt more radical policies on this than we've seen in the past. One of them is setting up um, a national or socialised research and development. Another one is something called compulsory licensing, which touches on what Sibyl Gilly was talking about. A government can, so there are TRIPS rules that have monopoly uh, status at an international level and so on, but a government can say, no, no, we're breaking that monopoly because it's too important. We have, we, have a, we, have a, we have a need in this country to break that monopoly. It's called compulsory licensing. It means that they instruct our industry to produce those drugs in a generic way at cheaper prices. That's what they've done in South Africa, it's what they've done in India. How exciting would it be if a Labour government decided that some of these drugs were going to issue a compulsory licence? That would, that would give the pharmaceutical companies something to think about. That might actually force them to behave in a more reasonable manner on some of this stuff. So I think that's something we should be talking to them about as well. Um, and very um, quickly on your question, there's a huge difference. Uh, I, I, I mean, you know, we are not affiliated to any one political party as, a, as an organisation, but there's an enormous difference between talking to a Labour administration and talking to a Conservative administration. We hardly talk to a Conservative administration, they're not interested in what we've got to say, basically. Um, and I would say even, and we have many, many criticisms of them, but I would say even the new Labour administration was a lot more engaged and interested in talking to us um, than the last, anything that we've had in the last seven years or so. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge difference. Um, and therefore voting is a critical part of this as well, of course it is. Um, and of course, in terms of the policies we're talking about at the moment, some parties are much more ready to be engaged than others. Which never means you should say, oh, I'm just going to assume my MP is going to be good on this. Because the point of us as movements is to push, is to push and hold to account. Because even if you get the government of your dreams, you know, they, they, they can't just, they won't be able to just go and do whatever we want them to do. You know, it's for us as the grassroots to keep pushing, to keep holding them to account. So that's why I think this kind of activism is more important now than it, than it ever has been before. Sam, uh, Nick, could you say something on Sam's question? Oh, it is, yes. Uh, I just uh, said to Nick, if he could say something on Sam's question about, he felt that um, the, the, drugs, the equipment delivery system was taking a lot out of the NHS. Yeah. Uh, it, it's true, but I only know it anecdotally. So we would need to do some more research, but I think it's a really interesting point. And it's an interesting point particularly because some of the TRIPS Plus agenda that the, the, the big, big farmer is pushing at the moment, some of the extending TRIPS, making it even more powerful and even deeper, is about trying to put patents on not just drugs, but medical procedures and processes. So you actually have 20 year patents on the exact way that you do certain forms of heart surgery or whatever. I mean, there's some ways they can already do this, but uh, they definitely want to push to make this stronger. And of course, that would be even far, far more detrimental to the NHS than what we've seen so far. So I think this idea of equipment processes and, and the rest of it is, is really important. 
Um, I can't say it's something I know much about, but it's definitely something I'm going to take back uh, to the office to have a think about. It's a really good, really good point. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Nick. We've got about, I would say, pushing it. We've got two minutes left to, if we could quickly, anybody desperately want to ask or make another comment? Uh, can we have this uh, lady here in the blonde in, with the black jumper on the left hand side? Thank you very quickly. Thank you. And uh, then, if for one more, one minute for a comment from you. Thank you. Terry. I just wanted to make a comment about the power of the pharmaceutical industry in this country. They are powerful enough to create new conditions. So a good example of this, if you want to research it, is a drug called Paxil, which is patented and used for the treatment of a condition called social anxiety disorder, which 10 years ago didn't exist. Now this drug's got a very interesting history. It was produced as an antidepressant, to go into an already very busy market. When it was trialled, it wasn't as effective as, as some of the other serotonin reuptake inhibitors. But what they noticed was that when people took this drug, they were more confident and less inhibited. So they actually started to look at manufacturing a condition, and this is the truth, you can, you can research this. They looked at was there a condition out there that they could give a label to that they could sell this drug and create a market? And that condition now has a DSM um, notation in the American Psychiatric Journals and um, catalogue and it's called Social Anxiety Disorder. Now, when the people in this room my age and younger um, were in their 20s, you've called it shyness. But now, there is a huge market and the manufacturers of Paxil are making a lot of money. I feel a whip as a campaigner. I sign petitions, I write to my MP, I sometimes talk with my MP. How can I be better local? to uh, finish a, a wonderful evening.